Imagine this, what if when you brought your photos into your photo editor, they looked amazing straight away without you having to do anything? Well, it might just be possible. And in this video, I'm going to show you how. We're going to use some fundamentals of photo editing along with the AI inside of Luminar Neo to set up a preset that we can throw onto every single photo that we bring into our photo editor, no matter what, and it's going to be an improvement. Sounds pretty good, right? Let's load Neo and I'll show you how we do it. So the first thing I've done is add a random bunch of photos that is kind of representative of the type of photos I might take. So you should do the same. I've got some landscapes, family photos, portraits, animals, automotive, all of that stuff and all we need to do is just pick a photo to start working on so to set up the preset we just want to come into the edit section here and we're going to apply three tools the first of which is the develop raw tool i like to start with a camera flat profile because that gives us the biggest dynamic range to work with in the light section we're going to leave the exposure alone because even if your photo is under or overexposed you don't want to change that because exposure is unique to individual photos i also don't like to play with the smart contrast because because although it can help your photos out, I find a better way to do it is with curves and I'll show you how to do that. But one thing that is important is to control your highlights. So I find dropping mine down not too aggressively, around minus 40 is a good place to start and also boosting the shadows up as well. I don't know, somewhere around sort of 34, 35, that's fine for my camera. As we protect the highlights and shadows, we start to crush down the histogram here. So we're flattening everything out. It's a good idea just to boost up the whites a little and bring down the blacks. I showed in my last video how a better way to actually do that is by moving the white point on the curve and the black point as well. However, when you're setting up a preset, that's not actually ideal. So just a little shift up on the whites and a little shift down on the blacks tends to work for my camera. Now the sliders and adjustments that I'm making changes to, I recommend that you do those as well, but the specific amount you set it to, that is an arbitrary amount. It is down to you to figure out what works best for your camera gear. These are the settings that kind of work well for mine, but it's a little bit of trial and error. And what's working on one photo, you want it to work on as many photos as possible, not just that photo. So that's why it's a good idea to have a little test set that you're going to bring in. And as we make our changes, we're going to save the preset and just try it out on the other photos and check that we're in, heading in the right direction with these changes that we're making. So let's just make sure that we have some nice contrast in our photo by dropping down the shadows, getting a point for the highlights and raising that up. And one thing that I notice with my camera and perhaps the way I shoot as well, my mid-tones tend to normally be a little bit dark. So I like to put a point in the middle and just lift that up as well. These may be a little bit too aggressive. Something like that's not a bad starting point. Let's look at our before and our after, fantastic. If we move into the color section, we don't want to change anything with the temperature because again, that is a unique feature of each photo. So you don't want to hard bake anything into a preset that is specific to individual photos. So I'll leave that alone. However, on the whole, your camera may undersaturate or may oversaturate photos. So you can make an adjustment there. If I'm gonna make any adjustment with my saturation, I'm gonna do it through the vibrant slider rather than the saturation slider. Reason being saturation also saturates the oranges, which is gonna make your skins look a little bit oompa loompa -ish. So I don't like to do that. Whereas if we boost the vibrance, we can actually get away with taking that higher, bringing more saturation to the colors, but it's not affecting the skin tones as much. Obviously we don't wanna take this too aggressively, just enough so that we're introducing a nice level of color. Here's our before. Here's our after, somewhere around that is fine for me. Now the sharpness is gonna depend on the lenses that you're using. This photo isn't a particularly good example of standard sharpness of my lens. My wife took this and that's uh, generally a recipe for a blurry photo. But I know from personal experience that a sharpening factor somewhere between 50 and 60 with a radius of 50, masking of 35, luminar standard amount is pretty good. If you're working with softer lenses, then boosting that radius up can be a good thing to do. However, you want to avoid halos. If you take it too far and you start to see halos, that is not a good look. So for me, somewhere around that 50 amount, I find tends to be good usually. Now this file is quite noisy. This was shot ISO 1600. If I come into a 200% zoom, you can really see that. 
and so I like to just build in a little bit of luminosity noise control, not too much, just playing the averages so that if I do have a noisy file, that is just gonna take care of that for me. And if I'm working with a low ISO file that doesn't have much noise, no harm done anyway. From there, we wanna look at the optics and what we can do is turn on the fixed chromatic aberrations, tick the auto defringe as well, that's helpful. And it's up to you whether or not you turn on the auto distortion corrections. I'm gonna grab this lens distortion slider and just move that so you get an idea of what lenses can do. So that is barrel distortion when your lens kind of makes it look all bulbous. And if I take it in the opposite direction, that is known as pin cushioning. And so the idea, even though I faked it there, if that appears in your lens naturally, by ticking this auto distortions corrections, Luminar Neo should take care of that for you. So that might be a nice idea to leave that on. Personally, I don't have too much of an issue with geometric distortion with my lenses. So unless I'm working with architecture, where I wanna make sure that those lines are bang on, I normally just leave that alone because the more things that you add into this preset for Luminar to figure out, the longer it's gonna to take to actually run those computations. So if I don't have to apply it in the preset, I don't, I keep things to a minimum. Okay, to save this as a preset, we come down to the action section here and we just click save preset. Luminar then prompts us to type in a name. And as this is just a starting point, I'll just call that develop raw only. Now I can jump to my catalog and I'm gonna select a completely different photo. Let's go for this one here. Very problematic, high dynamic range image. And I'm gonna to come to the preset section here. And now all I need to do is just click on this. There you go, look at that, what a difference. I can press the backslash key to see our before and after. A big change already, only with that develop raw tool applied. I really like that. Okay, I'm really pleased with that. We're making good progress already. That is just with the application of the develop raw tool. We've got two more tools to go. That bit was the hard bit. These two bits are nice and easy. So let's see what the next steps are. We can keep working on this photo. So I'm gonna jump into the edit section. We'll get rid of the before and after slider there. And the two other tools I want to look at applying are enhance AI and structure AI, and that's it. Okay, we'll start with structure AI and I'll grab the amount slider and I'm just gonna overcook this so you can see what it does. It just brings out a whole load of detail throughout your image. So it's really, really useful. However, as with so many of these sliders, we don't wanna go too heavy handed with them. And particularly in a preset slider that we want to work well on everything, we'll keep that somewhere around the 20 mark. Here's our before, here's our after. And we know that we can safely get away with applying that to all our photos because of the AI component within that. We know that the structure, that adding of detail, won't affect portraits. The AI will recognize, hey, that's a face. We don't wanna over accentuate details on skin and things like that, so it leaves that alone. So that's perfect. We're okay with applying that. The next thing we wanna look at is Enhance AI, which, as you guys know, does some amazing things for our photos. So again, AI-driven, so if I push that all the way so we can see what it can do, it boosts up the colors, adds contrast, normalizes the tones throughout the image. Here's our before, here's our after, way over the top. We don't wanna be doing anything like that to our photos but we certainly do want to leverage its power. So I don't know, somewhere around that 15 mark before and after, it's subtle, I like it. Let's come down to actions and we can save that preset. And because I'm confident, well, hopeful, <laughs> that this is gonna be a good preset, I'll call it D850 import so that I know that I can apply this to any photo and have a good result. So I'm gonna click on the Stormtrooper here, come into presets and let's just see how it goes. So this is our original raw file and this is with our preset applied, before and with the preset. So far, so good. As you can see, the potential of this universal preset is to save you so much time on all of your editing. You can go much more creative than this, obviously, but this is gonna be the key to getting a good foundation to your edit. Now, before I forget, I've got some exciting news from Skylum. They reached out to me and said, Anthony, we would love to offer your audience a 30% discount off everything in the Skylum store. So that's Luminar Neo, other creative presets, other assets like Skies, things like that. Anything from their store, they said 30% off for three days only. So hopefully you're one of the people watching the video in the first three days, because if there is anything you want or upgrade to the subscription, uh, so you get access to all of the extensions, whatever it is, 30% um, off, never seen 30 ever. So help yourself to that. But 
don't go disappearing to their store just yet because I want to show you how we can apply this preset to all of our photos in bulk and let Luminar do the hard work of getting our photos looking good. So let's reset these photos. We can come to the adjustments and just click revert to original. So everything's back to the way it was. So if you've just brought these photos in for the first time, all you need to do is just open any photo, come to presets, and then just come over to your import preset and hovering over will give you that little preview. So here's the initial one we made with just the develop raw and above that, that's develop raw and the structure AI. So if I toggle between the two, you can see what a big difference that is. So we just click that. The edits contained within that preset are now applied. We also have a slider so that if we decide, you know what, I like the effect, but I don't want it at 100%, you can actually choose just how much of that preset you put into your photo. But I'm going to go for 100% because we've designed it to work. And now I'm just going to come back to the catalog and we're going to synchronize the settings that are applied to this photo to all of the other photos. And we do that by pressing Control A to select all the photos. Now I'm going to right click, come to adjustments, and I'm going to sync the adjustments. So we just click that. And now Luminar goes to work applying those edits that are contained in that preset to all of those photos. And if you've built the preset right, all of your photos are going to look way better than they did when you first brought them in. You can then go into each one and develop those photos further. You might need to make slight adjustments to the exposure or the white balance, but pretty much that's it for a starting point. That's all you'll need to do. And isn't that way better than having to go in manually and make all of those changes that we've done in that preset? I'm pretty pleased with that and I hope you can see the benefits of just applying that preset to one photo, synchronize it to your whole batch, and they're all going to look so much better. Please let me know in the comments below if this has been helpful for you. If you want to check out a more creative edit that I do in Luminar Neo, you might want to watch that video right there. And also, if you like this kind of content and you haven't subscribed already, click the button there and you can subscribe to the channel and you'll see more great content like this. Great content? Blow my own trumpet there. More content like this. I hope you like it. Don't forget that 30% discount, three days only. See you in the next video. Bye-bye for now, guys.